That though is my paranoia point. We're gonna jar that door and the whole thing's gonna bust off. Everything's flying everywhere. Fire's coming out of things. You know when fire starts shooting out of things that the brew day is going sideways. Uh, now, I also like to double check uh, just to make sure that my rake is working. So just flip it on real quick. I hear it, you hear it, there you go. I would give a visual on all your valves right now. Make sure everything you got, the top sparge ring closed and your full line all the way down is great. The hot liquor tank is back up to one, uh, 165. So we can cut the pump and then we're gonna wanna make sure that all of our pressure points for water are closed, all of our water access points. So it's two valves over here and one valve down here. You can bust that hose off, set it over here. And then remember you're gonna hang the union uh, from that port right there and blast a little bit more through. So we mentioned earlier there's gonna be there's gonna be a couple of key steps that we take today to try to push forward like as much tropical fruit flavor and aroma as we can in this beer. And that starts with the recipe. Pretty much all of my techniques that I'm using with building recipes like this is built off of using concepts from this book. The new IPA by Scott Janish is not in your library, it needs to be. This book is so good. One of the things I love about it, every chapter basically has cliff notes at the end. Um, you can skim through that stuff and get a good feel for, for what's going on in each chapter. Great, great book. Uh, heavily research driven. Uh, Scott does a great job. You really also need to check out scottjanish.com for a wide range of stuff. Again, primarily data driven stuff. Scott's really the best. Every beer starts with the malt. And as far as the malt goes, one of the things that we're doing when we're trying to make one of these juice forward, kind of tropical, hot flavor and aroma forward IPAs, we're tweaking the, the grain bill a little bit. The super majority of, of what I'm doing with these beers, again, based off that book uh, with Scott Janish, we're gonna be getting 20 to 25% blends of something like wheat and or flaked products, primarily oats. And one of the functions uh, of doing that is haze in these beers are not meant to just be yeast sludge, right? What we're doing is we're throwing some protein in there. The oats are gonna bring some uh, beta-glucans to help pick up the softness, the viscosity of the wort. But the idea is, is some of that haze is actually, in, in one, supposed to be a polyphenol haze, meaning that it's hot particulate. But also, some of that haze coming from the malt is meant to help those hot flavor and aroma compounds kind of piggyback on top of that. That hot flavor and aroma will kind of glom onto that haze and keep that in suspension. It kind of all starts with the malt right there. So we're gonna be mashing in with hot water and our grain. What we're doing with the water though is we're pushing up the level of chloride in this beer. I think we're looking to hit about 250 parts per million uh, chloride. Chloride will help to round out the beer a little bit and help to push up the softness. The other thing, which we'll probably talk about later too, is we are using a yeast strain that I really love from Imperial Yeast. You should check them out. Super majority of the yeast that I use here is from Imperial. We're gonna be using their juice strain, which creates a, a really complementary ester profile that really helps to lift kind of those tropical notes of the hops that we're gonna be using. Um, I'll have a recipe for this uh, available for you to be able to check out. All right, so right now Josh is opening up uh, the 150 pounds of flaked oats that we're gonna be using in this beer. I am grabbing the brew log so he can start, uh, he can start tracking things as we go here. All right, so we are gonna be using the brew log from the other day of the beer that we ended up dumping. Obviously, just changing some of the numbers. Uh, this beer is 935 pounds of uh, base malt, 165 pounds of malted white wheat, and 150 pounds of flaked oats. Smash that like button. I think we're, uh, I think we're all set. What do you say? I mean, you feeling good? Let's, uh, let's check it out. So we have to open our water, and then we're good there. Our whole tree is closed with the exception of the sparge, great. Up, sparge is closed, water up top is open. And we can go ahead and fire this up at uh, probably like seven. And again, we're gonna verify that our flow meter is working correctly right here. Looks good thus far. I'm going to uh, track your numbers right here so you can just focus on that. We're starting at 742. How many gallons are going to go into that uh, ton before we start recounting? 55 is the word. In the meantime, Maggie is prepping up fermenter down here. 
that we're going to be brewing into today. We have a new pitch of yeast that we're working with. Once again, from Imperial, our favorite salesperson, Nina, hooking it up. Thanks, Nina. Turn that rake on to four now, forward. Do we have our salts and acid up here? Nice. I need to get glasses on. You have glasses, you're a good man. Right now, we are pushing hot water up from the hot liquor tank, which is below the mash tun, up along into grist hydrator. We got our water moving, everything looks good. We checked our clamps. Yeah, go ahead and give that a little pop. It's more about like not huge pulls, but kind of just sharp little, and you don't want to pull it all the way out. From there, you can, you can work it by hand now. You can put that down and wiggle back and forth. Booyah, Sometimes you need to give a little nudge. Okay. You can set that back down along the side. And really right now, you're gonna kind of let it catch up a little bit. Sure. Like I feel the way that flow right now is you can kind of see some dry grain falling, falling along with it. Yep. And you can see it starting to pile. So lean that up a little bit. Go a little bit more. And then that should start thinning out. See it's, thin, see it's thinning out a little bit. It's not because it, yeah. it's not piling like it wanted to before. So that's good. And you know what, right there, I'm just gonna nudge the water up a hair. That should help get that kind of dialed right in, I think. And then I would go ahead and start adding like a fifth of that just by eyeball at a time. And you know it's gonna go above the rakes. So you can kind of give yourself an eyeball of where that's gonna end up, uh, of kind of the pacing that you need to add that in. Okay. So you'll want it all in before we're adding the oats at the end. Whenever we're working with a beer like this, when we're adding, especially a sizable amount of oats, which is, is a pretty decent amount of oats, I like to add it in at the ends, um, toward the top of the mash. It's just something that I've done for a long time, whether or not there's utility to that or not, I'm not sure. But the whole idea here is what's going on in the mash tun is we're mixing hot water and grain and we don't want it to be dry in there or anything like that. We're looking to have all of that grain really well hydrated. Today we're using 1.5 quarts per pound of water to grain, water to grist, and that's what he's tracking right now. He's periodically adding the food grade phosphoric acid that we use, 75% food grade phosphoric acid, uh, and little bits of the calcium chloride as he goes kind of throughout to hit the appropriate mash pH and have the appropriate uh, ion makeup that we want for this mash. That looks great. Yeah. That looks great. If it's a little dry, you can slow down the grain. And again, kind of what we want to see is we kind of want to see it just like that, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great thickness for what we're looking at. Uh, we're going to be pulling uh, 513 gallons uh, for this portion of it. And you remember from last time, we'll just be spreading these over the top as we go. And then I'm gonna sub in for you uh, in just a minute, and I'm gonna have you knock out the rest of the grain, okay? The grist topper that we have, I'll show you, it's a, it's a large vessel up there that holds all the grain that we're dropping into the mash tun. You can put too much in it. Uh, and so for beers like this, where there's a, a good amount of grain going in, we leave some grains, uh, some bags of grain to be milled until we're actively mashing in. So we don't have an issue overfilling the grist case up there or anything like that. So that's the idea. How are we looking, Josh? We're still pretty spot on up here. We've got, I don't know, maybe six inches to the bottom of the, uh, to the, bottom of the rake. We're just maybe getting onto the thick side a little bit. Uh, with, uh, with our grain to water mixture. We have about 300 gallons into the mash tun right now. Oh, and Josh, if you can turn the hot liquor tank off, that would be great. Thank you very much. How's it look? Starting to trail a little bit of dry grain? Yeah, that little wreath, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now that's still, I would say it's still hydrated, but it's gonna be dry soon. So what, what do we do here? Yeah, so th those are your options. You can trim that down a little bit or you can oh, click that up just a little bit, yep. And again, when I first started doing this, this was always something that freaked me out, but it doesn't need to be as far as the timing of everything. Yeah, go ahead and add the rest of the acid and salts, that's great. Look at this guy, look at him. That's our brew baby, Maggie. Yeah, and then lift the back of the line because that'll drop a little grain too, and then close up the door. 
So all of our grain is in. We have a couple more barrels of water to go in. Yeah, you can just dump that right in, man. And then I would start, I would start getting that grain, uh, those oats in on top of that. All right, so Josh is adding the oats now. We have all the grain in. Uh, we still have some water to go. It's one of the things I always try to do. I don't want a situation where I'm still dropping grain, but I don't have any more water to be coming into the grist hydrator. I just think it helps to prevent clumps. The idea here is in the mash, we're taking this malt and adding hot water to it. And it's gonna be resting probably in that, like we're looking at probably like 149, 150 for this beer. Uh, in that range and plus or minus some degrees, the enzymes in the malt will convert all the starch to sugar. So really what we're doing right now is we're creating malt sugar water. We don't want that malt to be clumped up because then that means that there's dry starch that is not getting converted, right? It's one of the reasons that we have that rake turning in there and all that stuff. You still got pretty much two barrels to go, so your timing is fine. You don't need to feel rushed. It's looking awesome, man. That's great. I'll grab you the water hose. Hose down the walls and the top of that rake because we don't want any of that stuff sticking. We want it all in the mash. We've got about one more barrel of water to go in there, Josh. We're stopping at 412, 413, something like that. Look at him. Could you be any more proud? I couldn't. If I were more proud, I would be crying. I know. Look at you. Look at you. Good job, Josh. We knew you could do it. We literally found him in the streets. No prospects. And then, yeah, you can close your valve up top. Uh, yeah, at this point, I would, uh, I would kill that. Start it going in reverse because that makes me happy. And then start breaking down, start breaking down the, the grist hydrator uh, and just give it a small spray out on the top, whatever. I don't like to put like the whole thing in there because it's full of grain and then she's going to be using it, you know what I mean? So to keep that clean, just kind of that little rinsey rinse and we'll go from there. So that's great, man. Yeah, you can start it uh, forward again, give it three, four rotations, kill it to where it's at 12 and six because that makes me happy. And, uh, and then you can bust down that, that grist hydrator. Good job, Josh.